do want to welcome you tonight to our evening service. We thank you for joining with us wherever you are in the world. We trust that the Lord will bless his word to your hearts. If we can be of any help to you, don't be afraid to contact us at any time. We would be delighted to help you in any way. Do please remember that our Bible study will be on Tuesday. That's online. Uh, and it's on Tuesday at 8 p.m. Our prayer meeting will be on Wednesday this week. Uh, that's Wednesday at 8 o'clock in the church. Uh, if you are not able to come to the church, uh, then uh, we can uh, enjoy. You can join us with, on Zoom and uh, we'll give you the details if you contact us. And then also next Sunday, uh, we will be back in the church uh, for our morning service next Sunday morning, 11.30. Uh, we thank you for joining with us and we trust that the Lord will richly bless you uh, in these days. Now let us still our hearts and come together into God's presence wherever we may be in our separate homes. Let us pray together. Our Father in heaven, we just come into thy presence again this evening and we come, Lord, with gratitude in our heart we thank you, Lord, for the privilege of drawing near to God and coming into your holy presence. We thank you, O God, again that, Lord, you have bid us to come. And we can say with the psalmist of old to enter into his courts with praise and be thankful to him and to bless his name. For God is good and he is full of mercy. And today, O God, we bow and we thank you for all the mercies of God that we have received from your hand. We thank you, Lord, that even in these strange and difficult times that thou hast still been good, that thou art still merciful to your people, and thou hast been meeting our need. So we lift our heart to you today, and Lord, we come to your presence with gratitude, and Lord, with joy. What a joy it is just to know that we can unite our hearts together in your presence and we ask that wherever we are in our separate homes tonight that lord you will come and you will be present in every home that you will reveal yourself to every heart speak O god to us as we hear your word and grant that lord as we worship together that you will be glorified we bow and we thank you again for our wonderful savior and for his great salvation. We thank you that we are redeemed, not with corruptible things such as silver or gold, but by the precious blood of Christ. We thank you, Lord, again for the merits of that blood. We thank you for the power of the blood. And, O oh God, we pray that it might indeed be applied to our hearts tonight. We ask, Lord, tonight that you will remember those from our congregation that are going through deep waters. Those, O oh God, who are carrying heavy burdens. We pray for those who are ill and have loved ones who are ill, that they might know a healing touch of God upon their body, that you will continue to answer prayer for them and assure them, Lord, of your love at this time. For those, Lord, who still are feeling the loss of loved ones who have been taken, we pray that you'll minister to them. And Lord, that each one might individually sense the grace and the presence of God. Now we ask, dear Lord, that as we uh, worship this evening, as Lord, we hear thy word, that thou wilt speak to us. Make thy word, we pray, uh, relevant to our lives. Grant that you will help the one who will speak, that he might know the anointing of God. And we pray that all of us might be responsive do whatever God might say, for we ask it in the Saviour's precious name. Amen.
Good evening, everyone. Our reading is from the book of 2 Kings. 2 Kings 5 and chapter 1. Now Naaman, captain of the host of the king of Syria, was a great man with his master and honourable, because by him the Lord had given deliverance unto Syria. Syria. He was also a mighty man in valour, but he was a leper. And the Syrians had gone out by companies and had brought away captive out of the land of Israel a little maid, and she waited on Naaman's wife. And she said unto her mistress, Would God, my Lord, were with the prophet that is in Samaria, for he would recover him of his leprosy. And one went in and told his Lord, saying, Thus and thus saith the maid that is of the land of Israel. And the king of Syria said, Go to, go, and I will send a letter unto the king of Israel. And he departed and took with him ten talents of silver and six thousand pieces of gold and ten changes of raiment. And he brought the letter unto the king of Israel, saying, Now when this letter is come unto thee, behold, I have therewith sent Naaman my servant to thee, that thou, thou mayest recover him of the, his leprosy. And it came to pass, when the king of Israel read the letter, that he rent his clothes and said, Am I God to kill and to make a lie, that this man doth send unto me to recover a man of his leprosy? Wherefore consider, I pray you, and see how he seeketh a quarrel against me. And it was so, when Elisha, the man of God, heard that the king of Israel had rent his clothes, that he sent to the king, saying, Wherefore hast thou rent thy clothes? Let him come now to me, and he shall know that there is a prophet in Israel. So Naaman came with his horses and his chariot, and stood at the door of the house of Elisha. And Elisha sent a messenger unto him, saying, Go and wash in the Jordan seven times, and thy flesh shall, become, shall come clean again to thee, and thou shalt be clean. But Naaman was wroth, and he went away and said, Behold, I thought he would surely come out to me, and stand, and call on the name of the Lord his God, and strike his hand over the place, and recover the leper. Are not Abana and Farpar, rivers of Damascus, better than all the waters of Israel? May I not wash in them and be clean? So he turned and went, and went away in a rage. And his servants came near and spake unto him and said, My father, if the prophet had bid thee to do some great thing, wouldest thou not have done it? How much better then when he saith to thee, Wash and be clean? Then he went down and dipped himself seven times in the Jordan according to the saying of the man of God. And his flesh came again like unto the flesh of a little child, and he was clean. Finishing there, and we trust that the Lord will bless the reading of his holy word. Now I'd like us tonight to turn to this passage of scripture that has been read for us, where we have the account of the healing of uh, Naaman. Uh, we're told a little about Naaman, uh, captain of the host of the king of Syria. He was a great man. He was a great man. You know, very often at a funeral service, uh, there are things said about people who have passed to, uh, that maybe are not exactly true uh, to the, the character of the person. It's very easy for people to say after they're gone, oh, he was a great man. Uh, we recognize that sometimes uh, things are exaggerated and people seem to have a different uh, story to tell and someone has gone and so uh, we find here in this passage of scripture he's described as a great man in the eyes of his master the story was told about a notorious gangster uh, who had terrorized the community and profited from uh, some of his awful deeds and he, whenever he died uh, his brother who was also a gang member uh, came to uh, the local minister and said now uh, you've heard my brother has died you know the kind of person my brother was if you're prepared to say uh, that my brother was a saint at the funeral service I will give you a very large sum of money for your church uh, the minister uh, pondered and thought for a moment and he says okay then uh, I will I will say uh, during the funeral service that your brother was a saint. 
So the day of the funeral came round and uh, the minister got up and he stood before the congregation with the coffin in front of him and he said, well, you know that this man who has passed away was one of the no most notorious evil villains and gangsters that this community has ever suffered under. And he just exposed the vileness and the wickedness and the evil of this man that had uh, been terrorized the community and profited it from uh, all of the vice and wickedness and evil. And he uh, just elaborated it in all of the, the, the wickedness of this man. But he said, having, all, having said that, compared to his brother who is sitting down here in the front seat, he was a saint. Now that's only a story, but we recognize that it's not so much what other people say about us that what God reveals about us that is really important. Uh, we find that it is described as a great man in the eyes of his master or uh, the king, uh, Naaman, captain of the hosts of the king of Syria, was a great man with his master and honorable because by him uh, the Lord had given deliverance unto Syria. Uh, uh, he also was a mighty man of valor. But we recognize that uh, uh, while he's described as a great man, it may not have been very great for that little girl who was violently taken away captive from Israel and brought as a maid into his home. Uh, we realize that we don't know the story. Perhaps her mother and father were murdered in the rampages of this uh, man who was a captain of the hosts of Syria. Uh, we, we recognize that uh, no matter what people may say about you, uh, there's always a but. And we find in this man's life, he may have been described and thought of as a great man and honorable uh, he may have been described as a as the, the mighty man of valor, but but he was a leper. Uh, there is something in the past of every man that mars their life, because the scripture tells us, but all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. We recognize that. Uh, uh, while this man is described as great in this passage of Scripture, I want to un uh, focus upon some of the great things that we learn uh, in this uh, portion of Scripture. Uh, it is a great thing that God uh, is, is willing to help even those who do not know him or do not bow before him or acknowledge him as God. And it tells us that for by him the Lord gave deliverance unto Syria. We realize here is a man, and despite uh, what he was, uh, uh, a man who did not know God, uh, yet uh, uh, we find that God was willing to help him. And we recognize that that is an amazing and a wonderful thing. We have a great God who is willing to help those even whenever they do not know him. You have to acknowledge, if you're honest before God today, that God has helped you despite the sin and the butts and the, the blemishes and the stains and the blots that are in your character and spoil your life and the sin of your past. You have known God's help. You've known God's strength. God has been willing to give you length of days. God has been willing to give you strength. Every success that you have had in life has because of a great God who has given to you. And a God who has helped you in the past. Now it's easy to sing the great hymn, God, Oh God, our help in ages past. We recognize every single one of us have known help. And with the help of God, we have come to this very hour, even though perhaps in this uh, meeting today, and as you sit and listen to the word of God today, you honestly don't know God. Uh, you've lived uh, uh, without a knowledge of God or his salvation. And yet God in his goodness and in his mercy has, has helped you even to this very day. 
Every success that you've had is a tribute to the fact that God has given you help. This was true in the life of this man, Haman. He was a great man with his master and honorable. We recognize that, that there are those and God has instilled into them a, a measure of, of honor. Uh, they, they are decent people in many respects. It is because of the influence of, of the word of God and the truth of God. Uh, we recognize here he is described as a mighty man of valor. Uh, God was the one who gave him that, any sense of right and wrong or uh, any uh, strength to be able to fight in the battles or any wisdom to be able to lead uh, the army. Uh, God was the one who gave. And, and dear friends, you and I must never take for granted the fact that every good and gift, perfect gift cometh down from the Father of lights. Everything that you have, God in his mercy has, been, has given to you. I wonder, dear friend, do you ever stop and think of the goodness of God? And God is a, a, a great God who reaches out his hand, who satisfies every living creature, who gives breath and life. And he, he causes the sun to rise and the rain to fall. And he comes in 10,000 ways in his greatness and his goodness, and he gives, and he gives, and he gives again. What a great God we have. We recognize that in the eyes of his master, Haman was great. But oh, think of the greatness of God. The greatness of God who has spared you even to this time. Who has provided salvation for you. Has purchased for you a, a, a way of escape from the wrath and the judgment of, to come. What a great God. Well, wasn't it great that that little maid believed and trusted in God? At a time, you know, whenever you read the judges and read the earlier chapters, you recognize that there was times of great spiritual apostasy and, and spiritual darkness. And despite uh, the climate in which she lived here was a little girl. We don't know what age she was. Maybe a tender little child. And yet she had uh, faith and trust in the God of Israel. And despite the difficulties that she had experienced. Sometimes it's amazing how quickly people will, will question God and his goodness. And, and doubt uh, the goodness of God. They, they fall over and they, they hurt their ankle and say, why did God allow this to happen to me? And in a sense, any difficulties they face, they, uh, they're quick to blame God. Uh, and when they can't understand and can't see why uh, hard things and difficult things happen in life, and their faith uh, melts like snow uh, and they, they, they're in despair. But here is a young girl and she has been taken prisoner at a tender age. She has been separated from her loved ones. She has been taken captive. And, and yet despite the hardness and the difficulties that she had passed through, she has a faith and a confidence in God. She believes. Uh, she believes that there is a God who is able uh, to help in any situation. Uh, she cares why she is not filled with bitterness uh, at the fact that she is now living in, 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 as a captive. Uh, she doesn't despise those who, who have taken her prisoner. Uh, she doesn't hold a grudge in her heart against those who have perhaps have been uh, harsh with her. Uh, and making her work uh, where she would not. Uh, here she is, so that uh, she believes in God and she cares. She cares enough to speak out. Oh, uh, the challenge often comes to her heart. Do we care enough to speak out to those who are in great need? Uh, here, is, here is a wonderful thing. Uh, we have. Uh, here, uh, this, this young girl, and she said, Would God uh, um, uh, 
My Lord, we're with the prophet that is in Samaria, for he would recover him of his leprosy. Uh, here, is, here is a little girl, and, and uh, it is a great thing that you find in this little girl's heart a, a desire to share a message of hope and a message of deliverance uh, in, in, in a God who is able. We find that uh, it was great that there was a man who, uh, who believed God or that nothing was impossible. Uh, I don't know whether uh, there were ever any other lepers healed. But here is, here is a man of God. And he believes that nothing is impossible. And, and he has conveyed that message even to impart that message to this little girl. There is a prophet that, that can, that can uh, uh, be used of God to, to touch the deepest need of the human heart and life. Now, there is a God in heaven who is able. And we find here that hey, this little girl is a great thing. That there's a God who shows kindness and, and, and gives help to those who are so unworthy. And so it's a great thing that there's a, a little girl here in this situation who is willing to trust God and believe God and declare and to speak about a God who is able. It's a great thing that there are men who God can use. A prophet that, that, that dares to stand and trust God for the impossible and believe God. It's a great thing that there was an unnamed servant who was willing to carry the message to the king. We're not told, but it says, One went and told the Lord, saying, his Lord saying, Thus and thus said the maid, uh, that is, of the land uh, of Syria, and the king of Syria said, Go, uh, to go, and I will send a letter to the king of Israel. Uh, 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 we, we find here there are those who are getting excited. Uh, it's a great thing whenever the gospel message comes to the lives of people who are in despair. And people who are in difficulties and darkness and there seems to be no way. And suddenly they hear, even if it's from a little child, they hear a message that causes their hearts to hope and their, their hearts to rejoice. And we find here that uh, the message came and, and, and a messenger went and told his Lord and, and they went and they told the king, there is hope. There is a God in Israel. There's a prophet, a man of God who is in touch with heaven. And the power of God can flow and meet need. And dear friend, that is the wonderful message today. That no matter what your need is, no matter how dark your circumstances are, there is one who can bring deliverance. There is one who can cleanse from the defilement of sin. There is one who can save you. There is one that can break those habits that have, that have dogged your life. There is one who can give you strength to rise from, from defeat into victory. There is one who is able to save uh, to the uttermost. We find here that uh, there was this man who was great and yet uh, there was a but in his life. There was a problem in his, in his life that, 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 that changed everything, that brought a cloud of darkness and despair and hopelessness. But there was a God who, who hears the cry and, and a God who is willing to help. And there was a little maid. And there was a prophet. Oh dear friend there are many great things in this passage of scripture. And yet we find so often. And that men misunderstand and fail to grasp the, uh, the simplicity of the gospel message. And it tells us here that when the message. Uh, the little maid had given the message very faithfully. He said hey, would God my Lord were with the prophet that is in Samaria. For he would recover him of his leprosy. The message was clear. Here is the direction in which you need to go. Here is the one who can bring that message, that deliverance to you. And they went to the king. They went to the king. They went to the king of Israel. Uh, we find so often 
and that men will look to, to in the wrong direction, even though the message is seen. There are many who hear the gospel message, and instead of coming to Christ, they think, oh, I need to go to church. I need to turn over a new leaf. I need to do this. I need to be a better person. I need to stop doing this. Dear friend, there's no salvation in just attending a church. There's no salvation in just turning over a new leaf. You need the Savior. You need Christ. Christ is the answer to your every need. And yet we find uh, that uh, people feel that somehow man has the answer. Or if you have the right man, uh, he will be able to help you. Uh, the king must have the answer. Uh, he must send a letter to the king of Israel. And we find that man's response uh, to the, human, uh, the need of human hearts. I listened recently uh, to, to uh, uh, our religious leader uh, who was dealing with a very, very difficult situation. Uh, and uh, uh, it was a tragedy. It was a, a dark and a difficult situation. And the interviewer said to this man, you know, what, what would you say uh, to uh, the, the, the people who are going through times of difficulty? And, and there was nothing to say. He, he had no message. Uh, he, he, he was filled with fear and confusion. And, uh, and this was a dilemma. And uh, he, he only waffled. And, and here is this king, whenever he gets this message, uh, we find that uh, when the king uh, got this head, uh, brought the letter to the king and said, Now this letter has come unto thee, and, and uh, I have therewith sent Naaman, my servant, to thee, that thou mayest uh, recover him of his leprosy. And the king was, he says, Am I, in, uh, when he read the letter, he rent his clothes and he said, Am I God to kill and make alive? And this man has sent. And to me to recover a man of his leprosy. Wherefore consider I pray you. And see that they seek a quarrel against me. You see here's a, here's a, a man. Uh, and he has no answer. He might be a king. But he has no answer to the need of the human heart. Uh, there's, there's nothing but fear and confusion and dilemma. Anger and weakness and, 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 and suspicion. Uh, and he's thrown into confusion. And, and so often, when you turn to man, they have no answer. Uh, there's nothing but confusion. You recognize there's weakness. Uh, men, and they have no power to stand uh, and, and live right themselves. And yet they'll try to tell others how to live. And, and we recognize that uh, uh, we, we find in this passage of Scripture the foolishness of men. Even though they, uh, they, they might be considered great men, they have a need uh, that man cannot meet. Uh, but it's a great thing that there is a God who is care, who is willing to help. It's a great thing that there's a little me that is willing to share the message. It's a great thing that there's a, a, a man of God who knows what is happening in his world. Uh, there's no modern communication and uh, the prophet was in Samaria, uh, and yet he knew what was happening. He knew the king was in distress. He knew that there was this situation, uh, and uh, he was able to deal with it and, and bring the simplicity uh, of the message. Tell him to come unto me. Dear friend, that's the great message. Now, we thank God that whenever Paul and Silas they were in prison and the, uh, the foundations of the prison were shaken and the, the, the uh, jailer was at the end of his life and, and he was about to slay himself and he cried out, what must I do to be saved? Paul and Silas didn't waffle. They had a message. They had a message. And dear friend, there's a message today for you. There is a place where you can find healing for your soul. There is, there is a place uh, uh, at the foot of the cross where, where Jesus Christ took your place and where he died so that you might live. He is one who is able to lift the burden of sin. He is able to give uh, to you pardon, uh, free uh, pardon for all of your past. He can take the darkness and bring light into your soul. He can take the despair and fill it with joy and peace. He is able to save to the uttermost. We recognize uh, here is the man of God and uh, 
And we find the simplicity of the message. Go, wash in Jordan seven times, and thy flesh shall come uh, unto thee, again unto thee, and thou shalt be clean. Dear friend, uh, we never tire of uh, proclaiming the great gospel message. Uh, we recognize, though your sins be as scarlet, they shall be as white as snow. Though they be red like crimson, they shall be as wool. He reminds us that uh, Jesus Christ uh, came into this world to save sinners. This is a faithful saying and worthy of all acceptation. Christ Jesus came into this world to save sinners. Uh, the wonderful message and that wherefore he is able to save to the uttermost all that come unto God by him, seeing he ever liveth to make intercession for them. Uh, Jesus Christ, uh, uh, the blood of Jesus Christ cleanseth from all sin. If we walk in the light as he is in the light, we have fellowship one with another. And the blood of Jesus Christ, his son, cleanseth from all sin. If we confess our sin, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. There is healing, there is salvation to be found in the person of the Lord Jesus Christ. And you need to come to him. You need to come as you are. You need to trust in the Lord with all of your heart. And we find here that the message came to uh, Naaman. He thought, he thought. You see, dear friend, whenever the gospel is presented, it exposes the nature of the heart. Whenever the gospel is presented and you are told that you're a sinner, all kinds of objections arise in the heart of man. But I'm a good person. I'm a great person. I'm a great neighbor. I'm, I have done this. I have, I have done that. And, and uh, whenever you hear the message that you're a sinner, that you're lost, that you're hopeless, there is a reaction in the heart of man. And, and we find this in this man, Naaman. He, he went away in a rage. He was wroth and he went away. And he says, I thought he would uh, surely come out and stand and call upon the name of the Lord his God and strike his hand over the place and recover the leper. Uh, are not Abana and Farfa, uh, rivers of Damascus, better? Uh, and here is the arguments that so often arise in the hearts of men. Uh, I thought... Uh, uh, th there's a, a, a wrath that rises against the thought of not being accepted in your own merits, not being able to achieve your own salvation, not being able to work hard enough to bring uh, yourself out of your sin and into a right relationship with God. Uh, there's, there's, there's something in the heart of man that runs away and whenever it hears the call of God instead of coming to Christ you go your own way and you, and you rebel against God. And, and your thoughts are rising above and you think that, that you know better and, and, and your way is a better way. And so we find that here is this man, this man who was described as great and yet he could not bow before the simplicity of, of a clear message. And this is the way walk ye in it. And, and my, he stumped at it and he stumbled at it and he, and he reached against it and he uh, opposed it. Uh, the very thing that would bring healing. And, and dear friend, it's hard for me to understand how it is that you fight so much against the gospel. That you, you struggle so much to come to the place where you're willing to trust Christ. And that you have all these arguments in your mind uh, and you, you have your thoughts and, and you stand in opposition and you walk away from, from the gift of eternal life because you think that your way, oh, the sinfulness, the vileness, the wickedness of a human heart, that rather than stooping down and drinking, you'd rather die in your thirst. In law, and rather than coming to the light that you'd rather stumble in the darkness oh dear friends here is a man and in the eyes of his master he's a great man but he uh, was a foolish man uh, we find uh, that his reaction was a typical reaction 
of uh, the heart of those who are blighted by sin and bound by wickedness and evil. And uh, we find here that uh, it was a good thing that God in his mercy had helped him to this time. It was a good thing that, that this little maid had, uh, had shown love toward him and was willing to share a message of hope with him. It was a good thing that there was a prophet and that he could look to and would give to him a message that would bring healing to him. It was a good thing that he had servants that persuaded him. And we find here that the servants uh, said uh, that he uh, went away in a, a rage and he was wroth. And uh, he, uh, a servant in verse 13, his servant came near and spake unto him and said, My father, if the prophet had bidden thee to do some great thing, would thou not have done it? How much rather than uh, when he saith unto you, wash and be clean. Dear friend, the, 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 it was a good thing. It was a good day. Uh, it was a great thing that there was a, a servants there that were willing to, pray, uh, to persuade him. Dear friend, that is all I can do. Seek to persuade you. Dear friend, you don't have to carry that burden of guilt. You don't have to stumble in the dark. You don't have to live in fear of, of eternal damnation. You don't have to live under the cloud of judgment. You can come and step from darkness into light. You can trust. You can reach out and put your hand in the hand of the Savior. And he is able to lift you. He's able to save you. He's able to come to you in a moment of time. And so we find here that he was persuaded uh, the hymn writer is almost persuaded now to believe. Almost, his, his, almost persuaded. Tell me, dear friend, can I not persuade you tonight uh, to give your heart and life to Christ? It will mean for you the same as it meant for this man. You see, for, for Naaman to know healing, uh, he needed to uncover the extent of his need. He was a mighty man of valor. He would have worn his soldier's uh, armor, uh, whatever it might have been, his coat of mail, his, his shield, his, uh, the whole army uh, general uh, outfit. But he would have had to take it off bit by bit and stripped himself until he stood there naked, as it were, eh, with all of the, the leprosy exposed, no longer covered by a charade, but, but willing to just open up and in a sense acknowledge, this is who I really am. I'm not a great man. I'm not a mighty man. I'm a lost man. I'm a man who needs deliverance. And so he had to strip away everything. He had to learn what it means to obey. Uh, there was he healing to be found in obeying the word of God. Uh, he thought there was other places. But dear friend, there is only one place where burdens are lifted. When you come as a sinner to Jesus... As you bow before the cross and recognize that's what your sin has cost, a holy God. Jesus had to suffer and die because of the wickedness of your sin. Sin is a hateful, hideous, vile thing that needs the judgment and wrath of God. And yet Jesus took your place. And it's when you come to that place you recognize that that is the only place where burdens can be lifted. He had to understand what trust, uh, total trust, uh, that is needed. Uh, he dipped the first time. I can picture in my mind this man going down and he comes out and he is wet but no better. Some people feel that uh, all they need to do is be baptized. As a little child you can be baptized but it will not wash away your sin. You can go to church, dear friend, but a church will not save you any more than a garage will turn you into a car. Uh, we realize, dear friend, that you need to obey the word of God. You need to trust in the Lord with all your heart. You need to understand that it is as you trust and obey, as you surrender your life and come according to the word of God. Believe in the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shall be saved. Commit your life unto him. Trust also in him. And he shall do the work of redemption and salvation. 
and he discovered the power of God to give new life. He, here is a man, and, and while in his, the eyes of his, uh, his master, he was a great man, he had this problem of leprosy. And dear friends, we have this man, and whenever he was willing to come God's way, and when he was willing to bow in obedience to God's word and to trust in the remedy that God had provided for him, his obedience and his faith and his trust brought healing into his life. And here is a man, and the Bible tells us that after he completely obeyed, not just once or twice, or not partial obedience, but total obedience, Whenever he dipped the seventh time, the scripture tells us that his, uh, uh, when he, he dipped the seventh, his flesh came uh, like the flesh of a little child and he was clean. Now, I, I, I can imagine this man, not only has he leprosy, but perhaps he has the scars of the battlefield. He had been a man, a mighty man of valor. You, you don't become a mighty man of valor without having scars. Maybe there were times whenever he was in the battlefield and, 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 and the sword caught him in the face and there was a scar there of the battle. Or, or maybe in the midst of a fight, his arm was, was cut and, and there's a scar on his arm or maybe even on his side or somewhere on his body there were scars. But you see, dear friend, whenever God touched this man's life, those scars were gone. And dear friend, sin scars people's lives. And the past leaves ugly scars upon the life of men and women. But dear friend, when you come God's way and trust Christ as your Savior, then he transforms your life, not only cleanses away the leprosy of sin, but all the scars are removed and his flesh was like that of a little child. A little child. It's an amazing, it was a little child that brought the message to him. And God brought this man uh, to be like that little child. Dear friend, God is able to save and God is able to deliver. And I trust, dear friend, tonight that you will be persuaded to come to the fountain where sin can be cleansed. What can wash away my sin? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. What can make me whole again? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. Oh, precious is the flow that makes me white as snow. No other fount I know. Nothing but the blood of Jesus. If you're willing to trust and allow the blood of Jesus to cleanse you from all sin, then God will do a miracle in your life and he will make you a new man, a new person, without the scars of this old wicked world of sin, without the stain and the pollution and the sentence of death, but life, life that is eternal, life that is to the full. Oh, dear friend, trust Christ, trust him now, trust him as your saviour. Allow him to do what only he can do for his name's sake. With a word 
Father, we thank you for the wonder of your word. We thank you we have a great God. And we thank you, Lord, for the great truth of the gospel. We thank you, Lord, for the simplicity of the message. There is cleansing and healing for all who will come to that life-giving flow. From the cross, the blood of Jesus was shed. And in that blood there is healing, and through the life of a risen Saviour, there is a new life for those who will trust him. Oh, Father, set your seal upon your word. Bless those who hear. And for those, dear Father, who know that if their life is truly exposed, there's, a, there's that but that mars and scars their life. And Lord, you're the only one who can take it away. Lord, bless your word and help them tonight, we pray, for Jesus' sake. Amen.